Hey guys, it's Dasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to finally another round of a game of tomes. If you don't know, this is my TBR game. I have an entire playlist down below with the first video, which is the rules, as well as every single round I've ever played. And I feel like it's just time to bring her back. I feel like it'd be fun to push myself to pick up things, not just on mood like I have been for the last two years. So it's time to bring the TBR game back. Like I said, if you want a review of all of the rules and how the game kind of works, you can go click on that playlist to find the first video and just see what the hell this game is about if it is your first time here. But if this is not your first time here, you know exactly what's going on, you know exactly what's gonna happen, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna get right into the rules. All right, and we're back and we're starting right over here because I don't know where the hell we ended up last time and that doesn't matter. And we're gonna go ahead with roll number one. Four. One, two, three, four. And that's House Lannister, which is a horror or a thriller. Okay, so our first roll was the House Lannister prompt, which is just to read a horror or a thriller or something along those lines. And I think I'm finally ready to pick up the incredibly hyped one of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Now, I don't read YA all that much anymore, but something about this is quite intriguing just because it's really quite popular and the premise is just so good. How can you not love it, right? Five kids, I believe, go into a detention, high school kids go into detention, and only four leave alive. And I just, I, I love that. I'm a sucker for that kind of premise. And even though this is set in high school and I am definitively past that point in my life, I can't help but feel that, like there's hype around it for a reason. It's probably just a really fun, good time. And I feel like that's just perfect for spring. I don't really want anything too dark or too crazy. So I think this will hit the spot and it's nice and short. I don't have to continue the series because it is a standalone and I like that. So I'm kind of looking forward to this. All right, let's go for roll number two. Five, one, two, three, four, five, which is a location card. And what do we got? I don't know if it's gonna focus. There we go. We got Bravos, read a book with a beautiful cover. All right, so the second prompt is to read a book with a beautiful cover. And I've been kind of itching to pick this one up anyways lately. So I think this works out great, but I have Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude. I don't know what's been drawing me to this lately. All I know about this is that it's kind of a family saga following several generations, but I know that the author himself is Colombian. So I'm assuming it's kind of loosely based on his life and his family. And I'm really excited for this. I do love this edition. Something about the colors is just so bright and vivid and draws my eye to this every time I look at it on my shelf. So I think something about this also just seems like very spring ready for me, right? Generations, rebirth, the colors, the setting. I think it's gonna be very much in that alley. I've heard it's also quite like emotional and beautiful and not just happy and fun, which is my vibe anyways. I don't like happy and fun. But yeah, I'm really, really hyped for this. And yeah, I think it's obviously a spectacular cover, but beyond that, this is a book I've been wanting to get to for a little while. It's one of those modern classics that I just feel I'm gonna really connect with. So I'm hoping it pans out. And we're refocused again. We'll go for roll number three, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, we haven't had one of these, I think in a while. Hopefully you can't see me. Random Instagram pick. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh shit. So for our third roll, we got a battle card, which we have not gotten in a while, if I remember correctly. And these are a bitch. I don't know why I hated myself so much when I made these, but basically I'm gonna pop open Instagram and whatever book I see is what I'm gonna read. And my phone is currently filming, so I will screen record and put it here and you will see whatever book I got. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Instagram so you can see it. I'm doing in one shot. The way this is going to work, I'm just going to scroll until I see a book. That's it, that's all. I am skipping this book because that is Picture of Dorian Gray, which I have read before. Um, but otherwise, the way I envisioned this when I created that card was just literally scroll until I see any book, even if it's not a book I wanted to read. I'm going to scroll past this book as well, simply because I checked and it is not out yet, so I can't read it. Um, otherwise, that would have been the book. No book, no book, and here we go. So from this, I took a look, and I think I'm going to go with The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera, because it is on my TBR anyways, which worked out well. I could have maybe gone for the Patti Smith, but I think I'm happy with The Unbearable Lightness of Being. All right, we'll go for the next roll. Roll number four it is. 
Jesus. That's a five. One, two, three, four, five. Another location card. And it's, fuck, Sunspear. Read a book with a star, sun, moon on the cover or in the title. So for our fourth roll, we got Sunspear. And I don't have a lot of books actually with sun, star, or moon on the cover that I have not read yet. Um, I didn't really look at covers specifically if they had stars or suns on the cover, but I do have one that comes to mind probably immediately when I say that, if you're into fantasy at all, and that's She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. I'm not gonna lie, now that a lot of the hype has died down around this, I've been kind of like avoiding reading it for some reason. I think it was just more fun when everyone was talking about like the sapphic trio of books. And then this was included in that along with Jasmine Throne and The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. And then all of a sudden the hype, the hype train stopped and then this has just been languishing on my shelves. And I'm going to rectify that. This is a gender bent retelling of like the, f some emperor in China. I'm not super familiar with the premise of it. I've also heard it's very much historical fantasy heavy on the historical. It's just kind of that like some people have changed around because it's gender bent. So like, I don't know how fantasy this is, meaning I don't know how much I like it because I did try a historical fantasy earlier this year that ended up being mainly just heavy on the historical and not a lot on fantasy. And I don't know if it's my genre, but I will give this an honest go. And because it's gotten so much hype, I'm hoping that my instincts were correct in thinking that I may enjoy this. I also absolutely love that it's got this bright yellow hardcover underneath. You don't see that very often. I love it. And of course it's got sun right there and a big old sun on the cover so we're good to go for a prompt all right this is it final roll two one two i'm gonna go right for that character card got renly why the oldest son and not the best fitted the crown will suit me as it never suited robert and would not suit stannis the prompt is to read a young adult book our final role got us the prompt Renly, and that's to read a young adult book. And I might be cheating a teeny teeny tiny bit because A, I already have a young adult book on the TBR and I don't tend to read those often, but I also was itching to do a reread of this series. And the reason I say I'm kind of cheating is because this is technically, I guess, leaning a bit more middle grade, but it's like a very dark middle grade and it's right on the cusp. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know where it lands to be quite honest with you. I don't know who it's for. And you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm I'm kind of just keeping in suspense here. Um, Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. So if you don't know, this is about a girl named Maggie and her dad, and they are big book lovers, and they are also holding a secret. Maggie's dad, when he reads books out loud, can read things out of the book, but in exchange, things from their world, which is our world, go back into the book in exchange. One night when Maggie's quite young, her father, Mo, she calls him Mo, I think his name is Mortimer, um, is reading out loud to her and her mother when he reads a few baddies, a few bad guys out of the book that he's reading. But unfortunately, Maggie's mother goes into the book in exchange. The bad guys kind of just run off. They don't know what the hell's going on, obviously. And Maggie and Mo just kind of continue living their life and just kind of, you know, suffering because obviously Maggie's mother vanished into the book but they can't even have closure, right? Because they don't know if she's alive or dead in the world of the book, but you know what? They keep living, life goes on until one day, one of the people, not one of the baddies, but one of the people from the book that was read into our world shows up at Mo's door again and starts this whole chain of events, um, basically just draws them back into the intrigue of the book that they read the people out of and into their own world. And it's just, a really good adventure. It's kind of dark a little bit, which I like. This is one of the books that just like got me into reading this entire series and it got me into fantasy especially. Even though this world was really, really gnarly and cruel, something about it made me just want to curl up inside of it and just live inside of it because there's still so much beauty with how it was described and I really, really liked it. Um, don't know what that says about me as a child, but there you have it. If you've read it, you kind of probably know what I'm talking about. Like there's some pretty cruel and dark aspects to this world but I remember really, really loving it and I'm just so due for a reread. So I'm gonna count this as young adult. You can fight me on it, that's okay. And I think I'm also due for just a reread in general. I don't reread books as often anymore and that is a shame. So I'm gonna be rereading this in May.
So here is our stack plus whatever Instagram picks out for me. Fingers crossed it's something good. I'm doing it after I'm filming this, so we'll see what comes out of it. But I think this is a very interesting stack. There's a little bit of everything in here, which is, I mean, on brand, to be quite honest with you. I'm thinking that most of these books will be fairly straightforward and simple to read, which is good, which is what we need, because I have a feeling that this will be a bit more difficult. So I feel like there's a bit of bit of balance going on. You know, I can sneak this in over like a 24 hour period and just cannonball my way through it. Um, that's not the right term. Bulldoze my way through it. Same with this. I mean, I've read this before. It is a YA slash middle grade, so that's fine. And this is a fairly short fantasy, so I feel like that's going to be okay. So hopefully whatever Instagram picks is going to be reasonable. I'm begging. Let me know if you have read any of these and if you're excited to see Game of Tomes back because that was fun. I kind of missed the absolute chaos that happens with this fucking game. <laughs> I'm really excited to see what Instagram picks. Ew, I'm nervous though, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, um, let me know what you think. My social media is linked down below. As always, you can always come talk to me there because I am slowly getting back into the swing of things and I'm looking forward to being part of the bookish community online again. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Bye!